All right, welcome to Zigma Tech Consult Limited. Um, today we will learn um, statistics. We will have to do a continuation or the part two of um, the statistics we did in our last session. I think the last session we did some things about um, what statistics is. Um, we, looked at, uh, we looked at data collection. We looked at usefulness of statistics. We looked at um, some measure of central tendencies, OK? So we'll go ahead to look at um, some other aspect of statistics that is um, very important to you, uh, for you to know and grab very well before you sit for your exams, OK? So we're going to look at the part two. Our objective today is um, by the end of the lesson, you should be able to explain the concept of data presentation all right so i think the last time we we talked about how data are collected so let's look at how these data are presented after you have processed the data how you can present the data for someone to really understand what you are talking about also mm? <clears throat> so you should be able to um, explain data Presentation, then interpret and analyze data presented in tables and charts. Okay, you should be able to, at the end of this class, um, be able to interpret and analyze data presented in tables and in charts. Okay, um, and basically today we will be looking at um, frequency tables, um, bar charts, and pie charts mainly. Okay. Frequency tables, bar charts, and price charts. Those are some of the uh, data presentation formats that we'll be looking at today. Okay? All right. So, um, data presentation. What is data presentation? All right? Data presentation is the presentation of data or information for easy reading and interpretation at a glance. It's a form of presenting an information you have gathered such that someone looks at it and understand what is happening and understand the result you have given. So it's like a um, presentation of the result you have um, taken from a survey from an experiment. Do you understand? So it talks about how those data are presented such that once you look at it in a glance, you should be able to tell or analyze or interpret what is happening or what just happened in the data you took, okay? All right, so we say there are two main ways of presenting data. Two main ways of presenting data, which we are going to talk about today. Um, one of them is presentation of numbers or values in lists and tables. So presentation of data or value or whatsoever it is in lists and value. I think in our previous class, we, we looked at how some data we collected were presented on lists. Okay, we also looked at some that they gave us some questions and we saw those data presented on table. Do you understand that now? Okay, we, but today we are going to also look at another way is presentation of, of this data using graph and charts. Okay, so two ways, presentation of data in table and list and the presentation of data using graph and charts. All right, okay, so... Um, like I said, today we will majorly talk about frequency table and pie charts, okay? Frequency table and pie chart. I will say some few things in, maybe in some few other ones, like the bar chart, okay? All right, so um, frequency table. What is a frequency table? A frequency table is a table that lists a set of values and how often each one appears. Is a set of, uh, is a table that list that gives us a picture of values in a data in a statistics data and how often those values appear in that particular set of value for example if we say these are the values of the scores okay um that um, um some students had in a class let's say a a c d e f B, C, A, E, B, E, F. Let's look at this. 
Do you understand that now? Now, this data is just scattered. You know, just we just fetched this data. We just collected it like this. Now, frequency table is to put this information, to present it very um, beautifully, such that somebody sees it, should understand what is happening here. This data like this is, is confusing. You cannot place your eyes or understanding on what is happening here, really. Okay? But we, we can decide to put this in, in a frequency table. How? I can say that let us have the mark and let us have frequency. Alright? So, the mark we have here is A or the grade. I think this is grade, not mark, please. Sorry. So, this is the grade. Let us have the grade here and frequency. So we have grade A, grade B, grade C, grade D, grade E, and grade F. I think these are the basic grades that we use in our system here. Okay? All right. So let's see. Now you can see that I have created a table with the information I have here. Do you understand me now? Okay? So I have created a table with the information I have here. Now, what is the frequency table? We say frequency from um, the screen, as you can see. I say frequency is the number of times a specific data value occurs in your data set. This is your data set. Okay? These are your data values. These are values. Okay? These are the set of data that we have here. Now, frequency, which is this, how do we get it? It is the number of times a specific data, okay, occurs in a range of data set like this. Do you understand me now? So you ask yourself, what that means is that how many times does grade A occur in the set of values we have here? We count where we have A. This is one, two, three. Is there any other place we have A? No. So we have said A is three. It means that the frequency of A in this set of data is three. You get the point? All right. If we look at B, we have um, B1. We have B2 here. We have two. You understand that? We look at C. We have C1, 2, C2. We look at D. We have D1, no other D. So D is one. We have, we look at E. E is one. Two, three. So one, two, three. This is three. Then we look at F. We have one, two. Always make sure you strike as you get, as you fetch to put in the frequency table. It will help you not to repeat it again, okay? So this is one, two. So this is two. So now, if I ask you, is this information that you have here, the information you have here and the one you have here, which one is more presentable? Which one is more understandable? You will tell me that it is, of course, this one. Because this one gives you, just at a glance, you know what is happening in this class. You can tell somebody, oh, in this class, three persons scored A or had A. Two persons had B. Two persons had C. One person had D. Three had E. And two had F. So, you see the beautiful thing about data presentation. Okay, it gives us a clearer picture of, of the information we have fetched, okay, so, so that it becomes more understandable. And from this too, you can tell how many students um, sat for this exam or are in this class, okay, by doing what? Adding everything here. When you add everything here, it, it, it gives you an idea of the number of students that sat for this exam, okay? All right, so that is that for pie chart. Uh, uh, for, um, Frequency table. Frequency table can be either in vertical form or in horizontal form. So it can be vertical frequency table or horizontal. This thing can also be in this form. Let's say we have grade and frequency. Okay? So it can, you can either have the frequency table in a vertical form or a horizontal form. What do you do to where you have grade A, B, C, D, E, F. Okay? You have your 3, 2, 2, 1, 3, 2. 
So it still gives us a clear information of what is happening there. So whichever style it is represented to you, that is frequ um, frequency table, how it looks like, okay? All right, let's look at pie charts. We said a pie chart is a circular um, chart in which the circle is divided into sectors. You know, um, for pie charts now, this is frequency table. Now, this is pie chart. Okay? Now, pie chart, we said, is a circular chart. A circular chart in which the circle is divided into sector. What is a sector? A sector is any um, region of a circle formed by two radius. Okay? This is a radius. This is another radius. So this is a sector here. Do you understand me now? So this is divided into sectors. Do you understand me now? So if we have this kind of thing, can you see this now? So this gives us an idea of what the pie chart is. Now, we say each sector visually represents an item in a data set to match the amount of the item as a percentage or fraction of the total data set. Do you understand? So everything here comprises a whole of a data set. For example, if we are looking at this particular thing and we're looking at it as what we have here, this A, B, C, D, E, F. So let's have an F. Let's, let's just have F. One, two, three, A, B, C, D, E, F. Okay? So you can see that everything we have here re represents the number of students in this class. Do you understand me now? Now, we can begin to represent this particular number inside of this graph. But then, the um, larger the quantity of number or the larger the number, the larger the sector will be. For example, um, um, frequency 3, that is grade A, and grade E has more frequency, as in has larger, um, larger value. So we can give these two sectors that are bigger, okay? I think this sector and this sector, they are bigger than all these and this. So we can say this is like um, um, A, and this is like, which one again? E. Okay? Then we have 2, 2, 2 as the same thing. I think this, this, and this, they are the same. This is like the smallest. So this can be um, B, this can be C, this can be F. Then our D, which is just one, can take the smaller one, D. So we see that, we see that it is also um, possible that we represent um, statistical data like this in a pie chart like this. But of course, we don't just arrive at just drawing a circle and putting this in there. There are um, systematic approach of doing that. Of course, you have to construct a circle using a compass. Do you understand me now? Then you will use a protractor after getting the value of distance, okay, in um, a reference of 360 degrees, okay, after getting the ratio of this scene, comparing it to 360, okay, when you get the angular representation of these things, then you can now use a protractor to do this. Okay? I think we'll have some sessions where we'll have to use a life protractor to measure some of this angle here. Okay? You see how it's done. So you use a protractor, a pair of compass, and um, a ruler, a pencil to construct this. Okay, so you should know how to construct the uh, pie charts. Do you understand me now? All right, but then basically, this is just basically what we have there. Do you understand me? All right, so um, a pie chart is used to compare the different parts that make up a whole amount. Okay, so these make up this whole amount. So these are the different parts that make up this whole number of students in the class. This is the number of students in the class, and this is what they had in their results. Okay? 
Okay, so, um, so, so let's look at interpreting and um, solving data presentation, uh, some data presented in pie charts and tables from the uh, exam guide app. So let's just look at that, okay? So let's look at this. Um, this question says, the pie chart above shows the weekly sales of a motor dealer. Use the chart to answer this question. That is the question below. What is the question? Calculate the angle of the sector that represents the sales of Toyota. Do you understand me now? Now, they have, we have the picture that I will draw it on the board here. Example. Now, look at this on the board. Look at the diagram. There's a diagram there so that we use this to answer our question. They said, calculate the angle of the sector that represents the sales of Toyota. So this angle, Toyota, they, they have given us the different angles for Honda, for Nissan, for Mazda, and Toyota. Now, Toyota angle was not given to us. The sector was not given to us the real angle there. Okay? Now, if we look at this, for Nissan, it is 120 degrees. So, what the sales of Nissan cars represent in the pie chart is 120 degrees. It does not mean that this is the number of Nissan cars that were sold by this seller. The number of cars, of Nissan cars that were sold when converted to degrees is occupied 120 degrees in the pie chart. That is what it means. For Mazda, the number of cars, um, of Mazda cars that were sold, um, that were sold represented or represent 50 degrees in the pie chart. 50 is not the number of... Um, of Mazda cars that were sold. It's just the angle that the amount of uh, Mazda cars that were sold is represented. For Toyota, no angle is given. They just gave us the sector, but they, they have not given us the actual angle. Now, for Honda, if you can look at what we have here, there is no angle given there, but they gave a sign that represents an angle. Look at, you know, when we land, I want, I want to believe you have checked, you have seen, a class on angles okay we said when you see um, this kind of shape this thing that looks like a seat where you sit down it means I'm going 90 degrees okay so it means that Nissan car is 90 degrees is that okay now all right because this is a right angle triangle sign okay that is a right angle triangle sign all right so what that mean is that they are asking us to calculate this sector. What is this angle? It is simple. Remember our, this one. You know, in mathematics, your knowledge of one thing can be applied in another place. Now, we are looking at statistics. They are bringing in your knowledge of sum of angles at a point. Sum of angles at a point. This is angles at a point. They are all at this point. Can you see that now? Angle 50, angle 120, Angle 90 and Angle Toyota, they are all at a point. So, sum of angles on a point or at a point is equal to 360. Do you understand me now? So, you say 90 degrees plus 120 degrees plus 50 degrees plus Toyota degrees. Okay? So, let's just call that to Toyota T degrees. Okay? T is equal to 300 and 60. Always give your reason. Okay? Sum of angles at a point is equal to 360 degrees. You get that now? So you can add. Okay? So 90 plus 50 gives us 140. 140 plus 120. Okay? So gives us 260. So 90 plus 50 is 140, 140, 120, 0, 6, 2. That is 260. So we have 260 degrees plus T, this is the angle of Toyota, is equal to 360 
degrees. So what do we do? We take like terms, okay? Because T is an unknown. This is not an unknown. So take it out of where you have unknown so that T can be subject of the formula. All right, so T is equal to 360 degrees minus, because there is an invisible plus sign here, Every, any number that there is no um, sign at the back of it has an invisible plus sign, okay? So this is a positive number. So when it goes through this side, once it passes this bridge, this equal sign, it must drop its um, sign and take another sign before it can cross the bridge. So it will now become minus two, um, three, 260 rather, 260 degrees. So if you look at that, 360 minus 260. 0 minus 0 is 0. 6 minus 6 is 0. 3 minus 2 is 1. So it's 100 degrees. It means the angle for Toyota is 100 degrees. And the correct option there is option D. Okay? So we have applied our knowledge of um, angles to solve a statistical question. Do you understand that now? Okay. Okay, so um, let's look at some other questions. This is what is the ratio of the farmland used for beans to that of vegetables. So let's look at this now. The one beautiful thing about um, uh, one beautiful thing about data presented in pie charts like this is you can use it to they can use it to ask some questions to get some planning to get that is when, when we did the part one of this class we talked about the usefulness of statistics now we now we have gotten a statistical data presented in a pie chart and we want to get okay what is the ratio of um, beans planted to ratio of vegetable planted if we get that ratio it will help us to know okay are we going to plant more beans or are we going to plant more vegetables are our vegetable doing well okay we have invested so much money in plant you understand so it gives us an idea a picture of what decision we are supposed to take so here it says what is the ratio of the farmland used for beans to that of vegetable okay so let's look at number two now so we have this so the question is what is the ratio of the farmland to that of uh, of the farmland for beans to that of vegetables so what is the ratio of beans to vegetables so so what we are doing is ratio beans is to vegetables. This is what we are doing here. Do you understand that? What is our angle there for beans? What is the data presented? That is 100 degrees is to uh, where is vegetable? 82 degrees. 82 degrees. Okay. So this is equal to 100 degrees is to 82 degrees do you understand that now this will go off okay two here is 50 two here two into eight is four two into um two is one two into 100 is 50 that is two into 10 is five so we'll bring the zero to meet five because two cannot divide anything in zero okay so this is 50 is to 41 there are no factors again common to 50 and 41. So, the ratio of the farmland used for beans to that of vegetables is 50 is to 41. So, that is option C, the correct option there. So, that is how to get that solved. All right. So, let's see if we have anything. Now, this one is fraction. Now, we have done how to get other angles in a sector. We have done that. That is very good. We have done how to get ratio. Okay. They can even ask you, what is the ratio of um, um, beans to the entire farmland used for cultivating of these crops? Cultivating beans, uh, vegetable, granite, yam, beans. What is the ratio of beans to it? So what you have to do is to add 
the entire region, which is 360. It will give us 360. Once you, once you add everything here, it must give you 360. So if, if they say the ratio of beans to the entire farmland, that is 100 is to 360. Do you get the point now? 100 is to 360. Let's assume. Let's even assume that. Okay? Because they can ask you a similar question like that. They can ask you a ratio of a, 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 a particular sector to the entire circle, to the entire value you have there. Let's assume they're asking us, let's say this A and this B. This B is my question now. Say, ratio of which one should we choose? Which one we have choose uh, beans? Should we take another one? Let's say ratio of, um, of yam to the entire farmland. Yam, yam land to entire land. So it is, yam is 54 degree is to 360. Once you add all this, you, you can be adding it as I'm talking so that you get what I'm talking about. 100 plus 82 plus 124 plus 54 will give you 360. All right? Okay, so this is 360 degrees. Now, taking this will mean 54 degrees, 36 degrees. Uh, 360 degrees rather. So degree removes degree, okay? We are talking about ratio. Ratio does not really have a quantity, or so, so we remove that, or a, a unit. So two into, two is common in 54 and 360. So two into 54 is 27. How did we get 27? Two into five is two, remainder one. We put one in four, it becomes 14. Two into 14 is seven, that is 27. Two into 36 or 360. Is 180. How? 2 into 6, um, 2 into 3 is 1. Remainder 1, we'll put it in 6 to become 16. 2 into 16 is 8, then we'll bring the 0 down. So this is 27 over 180. 27 and 180, I think they have something in common. They have something in common. 3 is common between them. 3 into 27 gives us 9. Okay, 3 into um, 18 gives us 6. Then we will now bring this one down. So this is 9 is to 60. There is still something in common, right? Yes. What is common there? 3 is common here and here. So 3 in 9 is 3. 3 in 60 is 20. So at this point, there is no more thing in common there. So we say that the ratio of the land used for um yam to the entire land used for cultivation is 3 is to 20. Do you understand? So you, you can have all that. Okay? So now let's look at um, some other thing. So this question talks about fraction. They have we have a pie chart and we have a statistical data given there. So they're asking us to find um, the fraction of a particular sector and another sector, okay? We've gotten how to get an angle here, okay? We've gotten how to get this other one. So let's see fraction number three. So this is what fraction of the teachers? So this is an information about teachers. The pie chart below shows the distribution of teachers for subject in a college, okay? Use the information to answer these Question, what is the information we have? Let's draw the information. All right, so what fraction of the teachers are mathematics teachers? Now look at, they are asking us, what fraction of everything we have here is mathematics teachers? Okay, first of all, we should understand what the angle of the mathematics teacher is. Angle of mathematics teacher is 90 because of this is our sign here. So this is 90 degrees, okay? All right. So to get the fraction of mathematics teachers to the entire um, teachers in that school is what are the number of teachers we have here, okay? Here we have 90 degrees, 60 degrees, 120 degrees. This is French. They did not give us the whatever there, but we know since this is 90 
60 and 120, this will automatically be what, when we add up, will be 360. Everything here will be 360. So if they say what fraction of the teachers are mathematics teachers? What fraction of the teachers is mathematics? So these are for French teachers, CRK teachers, math teachers, and English teachers. So everything here, all the teachers make up 360. Okay? So math, fraction of math is equal to, like I said, you will waste your time if you begin to look for this sector first. And you do um, 60 plus 90 plus 120, the answer, you subtract from 360 to get this. That is not our concern. If, if they were asking us what is the um, angle for, t for French teachers, then we would have done that. So we know that everything here is 120, uh, 360. So it is equal to 90 degrees divided by 360 degrees. Do you understand me now? Divided by 360 degrees. Okay? So that means degree rem will remove degree. This will now be equal to 0 remove 0. So we have 9 over 36 to play with. Okay? 3 into 9 is 3. 3 into 3 is 1. 3 into 6 is 12. It is 2 rather. Okay? So this is 3 over 12. 3 into itself is 1. 3 into 12 is 4. So the answer is 1 over 4. So 1 over 4, so one fourth of the entire, that's what it means. One fourth of the entire teachers are mathematics teachers. Can you see what that represents now? If they ask us to find the fractional form now. It means that one quarter of all the teachers in that college, one quarter of the teachers uh, are mathematics teachers. Okay? All right, so that is that. And of course, our answer is option D. So let's look at... Um, Let's look at the next thing. This question is a bit um, technical, so you need to pay very rapt attention to the approach of solving the question, okay? All right, so let's see. The question is, the pie chart below shows the distribution of Mr. Olu's 60,000 Naira monthly income. So Mr. Olu's 60,000 Naira income. This is how it's distributed in a pie chart. Okay? So, Olu is a mathematician that have um, drawn a budgeting for his income in a month. Okay? So, they are asking us a question from that his um, budget or that his income. Let's see. This is Olu's income. Income chart. 80 degrees. School fees for his children. 80 degrees. Now, remember, Mr. Olu's monthly income, don't forget that, put it somewhere here, is 60,000 Naira per month. Now, the question is, what percentage of his income is spent on bills? What percentage of his income is spent on bills? Now, listen to me. They are asking us percentage of the income, not percentage of the sector or the angle occupied by bill. Do you understand me now? Percentage of the income. Now, how do we get the actual value? Remember, these are not the real value in Naira of Mr. Olu's um, income distribution for the month. So, it means that rent is just 180, but they are not giving us the value. But from this thing we have here, we can get the value of all these things. So what that means is, for us to get the percentage of his income, okay, we need to know his income for bills. How much in real value, in real Naira, does he spend in bills? So with this information we have here, we can do that. How is simply to um, divide the angle for bills, which is 30 degrees, by the total number of angles, which is 360, then multiply it by the amount for the month. It will give you a fraction, a fraction will come out of what he spends from that 60,000 naira for bills. So this will mean amount. For bills 
will be equal to angle of B, which is 30 degrees, divided by total angle 360 occupied by this pie chart, multiplied by his income, which is 60,000 Naira. You get the point now? So, this will remove this. 3 into itself is 1. 3 into 12 is... Uh, 3 into 36 is 12. Do you get that? So we are having 60,000 Naira divided by 12. You get the point now. So, you know what this should be. Okay? But then, just to help you, 2 here is 6. 2 in 60,000 will give us 30,000. You get that? 2 here again will be 3. 2 in um, 30,000 will give us 15,000. Are you with me? Then, 3 into itself is 1. 3 in 15,000 will give us 5,000. Because 3 divided 15 is 5. So, he spends 5,000 Naira on bills. This is on bills. He spends 5,000 Naira on bills. Are you listening to me now? That's what he spends on bills. Do you understand me now? So, you see this 30 degrees, the real value that it is representing is uh, 5,000 Naira. If you want to get what the real value for feeding is, you do 92 divided by 360 times his income, the total income. It will give you the value, the real value here. If you want to get for rent, 108 divided by 360 um, times 60,000. If you want to get for transport, 50 over 360 times 60,000. 80 over 360 times. That's how you get the real value. You can try that. Okay? You can try that. Once you do that for me, please, I want to give you that as an assignment. Do that. Check the real amount spent here, spent here, spent here, and spent here. When, if you do it correctly, when you sum all the amount together, like this 5,000 and the amount you will get here, 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 it will give you 60,000 Naira. If it does not give you 60,000 Naira, then you are wrong. I'm not the one that is wrong. Okay? So, once you do that, you will get 60,000 Naira. Meaning, it was the 60,000 Naira that was distributed to everything we have here. So, but then, our concern is the question. Let's go back to the question. The question says, what percentage of his income is spent on bill? All right. So the percentage of this on bill is this bill divided by the total number times 100%. Once they ask you percentage of something, just know that they want you to multiply that thing by 100. Uh, by 100%. So percentage on bill on bills is equal to 5,000 over 60,000 times 100%. You get that? So 60, uh, 0 remove 0, this 0 removes this 0, this one removes this one, this one removes this one. Okay? So we are having 50 times 1 to be 50, 6 times 1 here to be 6. So 50 over 6. You get that? So 6 into 50 will give us what? Now, if we look at 6 into 50, how many places are we going to have... Um, um, 6 in 50 and what will be the remainder? Remember, 6 in 7 is 42. 42 we still have 8. Okay? Now, 6 in 8 is going to be what? 48. 48. We still have 2. So, this will be like 8 remainder 2. That 2, 6 in 2 cannot go. So, we add 0 to that 2 and put point here. Alright? 6 in 20. 6 in 20 will give us 3, because this is 18, is 3, remainder 2. So that 2 again, we put 0, it will give us 3. We do again, to give us 3, to keep giving us 3, so we just stop. Because if you keep doing this, it will give you 3, 3, 3, 3, just like that. Okay? So this would be 8.3%. Alright? Now, 8.3%, and um, your correct answer there is option A. So you can do so many things in... Um, statistics and all that do you get the point now so let me see if we can get a question on bat and okay frequency table has been explained i've given you something on frequency table okay 
All right. So um, we would have to stop at this point. Maybe in our next class, we'll have to see how to get this data from a frequency table. We have to get this angular data from a frequency table. And subsequently, we can even learn how to construct, construct a pie chart using a compass, a ruler, and a protractor to construct this angle. So this is how far we can take today. You can um, go ahead, solve questions from your app, put um, some questions that you may not understand how to go about them, and we can see how to help you with that. Until I come your way again, thank you very much. Thank <music> you.